Oh, hello, my name's Richard Rollison. Well, the Honourable Richard Rollison, actually, but I think most people would know me better as the Toff. <laughs> We present The Toff and the Runaway Bride, a radio serial in six parts, dramatised by Roy Lomax, based on the novel by John Creasy. Starring Terence Alexander as The Toff, with Robert Dorning as Jolly. Part two, The Finger of Suspicion. Guy, do you intend to make a room-to-room -room search of my flat? I do, Richard. I know my wife's here somewhere. Now, excuse me, I want to look in the guest room. I really must object. Richard, get out of my way. No, I'm sorry, Guy. Richard, I'm warning you. No, Guy, I won't let you. Get out of my way, damn you! No! She's not here. No? Well, well, no, of course she isn't. If you'd bothered to ask before storming round my flat, I could have told you so. I would have sworn Barbara would come here. But why? You two should be going on honeymoon. You sure you haven't seen her? Oh, damn it, Guy. Oh, Richard, I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I behaved like an absolute bull. My dear chap. But how would you feel if your wife walked out on you and on your wedding day? I don't believe it. It's true. We were driving down to Bain for the honeymoon. Bain? Where's that? Oh, a little village down in Hampshire. Tony Carruthers loaned me his cottage for the honeymoon. Anyway, I, I stopped at the garage on the way. Damn it, I only left the car for a minute, no more. And when I got back, she'd gone. No trace of her. What do you make of that? Why on earth should Barbara want to run away? Beats me. She was a bit agitated at the ceremony, and that maniac shouting outside the church didn't help. But I put it down to nerves. You, you know, the occasion. That's all very strange, Guy. <sighs> I don't mind admitting this has knocked me for six well, look, I mean, I, I think a large scotch and soda's called for. Well, I could do with it. Yeah. I'll ask Jolly to rustle up some fresh supplies. Uh, won't be a minute. Righto. Uh, Jolly, have you a moment? Yes, sir. How is Major Lessing now, sir? A little calmer, I think. That was a close call, if I may use the expression. Yes, you may, Jolly. When Major Lessing burst into the guest room, well, I... the cupboard was bare. Fortunately. But how did Mrs. Lessing get out? I showed her into the room myself. The fire escape is close to the window, sir. Well, not as close as all that. She was taking a risk. Perhaps preferable to that of facing Major Lessing, sir. Well, the mood he was in, yes, I suppose so. Mrs. Lessing may also have considered the embarrassing situation in which you would have been placed, sir, had she been discovered. Yeah, but they're both friends of mine. I doubt that friendship or your reputation as the tough would have restrained Major Lessing. Well, you're probably right. Um. Forgive me, sir. Can you tell me just what is happening between Major and Mrs. Lessing? Well, in a nutshell, Mrs. Lessing has reason to believe that Major Lessing is already married. And very good reason, I'm afraid. Indeed, sir. A telephone call this morning before she left for her own wedding, then an incident outside the church. Though maybe that was pure coincidence. Hardly a substantial evidence, sir. And then she received a copy of a marriage certificate. Well, Johnny... I really don't know what to say. Well, it's fairly conclusive evidence, I would have thought. It would seem so, sir. Anyway, you can understand why she ran away at the first opportunity. But why come here, sir? Well, she asked me to help. You know, I do dislike having to conceal this from Major Lessing. But you have no alternative, sir, if you are to help Mrs. Lessing. Exactly. Oh, I'll take it, Johnny. Very good, sir. Oh, hang on a minute, please. Uh, Jolly, take a full bottle of scotch into Major Lessing, will you, and keep him occupied. Of course, sir. Oh, sorry to keep you waiting. Richard? Barbara, thank heavens. Is Guy still with you? Yes, but don't worry, he's in the other room. Where are you? Just round the corner, the, the Majestic Hotel. I'm sorry I disappeared like that. I was terrified Guy would find me. Well, so was I. God knows what would have happened. What should I do, Richard? Well, stay where you are. I'll send Jolly round to you. How is Guy? Is he dreadfully upset? Yes. Oh, I'm beginning to hate myself. But I can't face him, not yet. Not until I know the truth about that marriage certificate. Well, look, try not to worry, Barbara. I'll work something out. Incidentally, Guy was taking you down to Bain for the honeymoon. He was? Oh, Richard, how could he? That's the address on the certificate, where that woman lives. I know, but I wonder, would he take you there if he had something to hide? Uh, I don't know. Well, it's worth thinking about. Anyway, you stay put. Jolly will be with you in a minute or two. You're an angel. <laughs> Not yet. See you later. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, sorry to be so long, Guy. I wondered where you got to. <laughs> Jolly, where on earth have you hidden the new soda siphon? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, coming, sir. 
Majestic Hotel straight away. Mrs Lessing's waiting for you. I'll give you a call when the coast's clear. Very good, sir. Well, Guy, I'm all yours. What have you been up to? Me? Yes, you. Uh, nothing. Other than attempting to penetrate Jolly's immaculate domestic organisation. Anyway, let's concentrate on your problem now. I don't know. What the hell am I going to do? Well, we might reasonably start by asking why Barbara walked out on you. Well, you tell me. I haven't the faintest idea. Now, think. Is there something you might have said or done? Something that might have proved a last straw? You know what I mean. Well, of course there isn't. God, her father's going to celebrate when he hears about this. Yes, now there's a thought. Could he have anything to do with it? Oh, I don't think so. I was never going to be his ideal son-in-law. Well? No. When he saw Barbara had made up her mind, he accepted it. Yes. I suppose Barbara knew all about your accident. Yes. The blackouts, the headaches. Of course. Mm. Have you ever had to go back to Dr. Willard for treatment? No, not for a year or so. Look, Richard, what are you getting at? I wasn't exactly insane, you know. Calm down. I'm only trying to help. God, what a mess. And there's nothing you can think of that might have unsettled Barbara? No. Oh, it was going to be so marvellous down at Bain, and I'd laid on one or two special surprises for her. Really? What sort of surprises? Well, you know she loves riding. I got a pony. Surprise wedding present. Oh, she'd like that. And this farm I wanted us to look at. Rather thought of buying it if Barbara liked it. Well, could you afford it? God, man, you're as bad as a father. I'm not wealthy, but I'm not short of a bob or two. All right, Guy, I'm sorry. Oh, Richard, what am I going to do? Go down to the cottage at Bain. What? Mm, I mean it. Go down to Bain. Now, it's possible Barbara may try to get in touch with me. I'll certainly try to find her. Now, if we're successful, I'll have a talk with her, see what I can do. Richard, find her for me. I'll do my best. Uh, here's the number of the cottage. You'll phone if you've any news? Yes, of course. And if it makes you feel any easier, give me a call any time. I will. Well, I'll be on my way. And Thanks, Richard. We'll be in touch. We will. Uh, Richard Rollison? It's me, sir. Ah, oh, jolly, I was just about to call you. You can bring Mrs Lessing back to the flat now. That will not be possible, sir. Why? I'm afraid Mrs Lessing is not here. She's disappeared. But she was to wait for you at the Majestic. I'm sorry, sir. I wonder... What was that? No, no, no nothing, jolly. I'm, I think you'd better come back here straight away. Yes, sir. I'm going to visit a doctor. Uh, nothing serious, I hope, sir. So do I, jolly. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. I must say it was awfully good of you to see me so promptly. Not at all, Richard. Do sit down. Oh, thanks. Is this a professional or a social visit? Well, it's a bit of both, actually. So what's the problem? Uh, an old patient of yours, Guy Lessing. Once again, is it medical or social? Uh, psychological, perhaps. I see. You do realise that as his doctor, I can't tell you anything confidential. I wouldn't expect it, John, but this is rather important. You see, I suspect that Guy Lessing may be in some sort of trouble. Oh, how's that? I'm afraid that has to be confidential, too, at the moment. Touché. You may know that he married Barbara Lorne today. Yes, I was just reading about it in the evening paper. Mm. I've known her for years, since she was so high. Guy, not nearly as long, but I like to think they can both depend on me, if the need should ever arise. And the need has arisen? I think so, yes. How can I help? Well, Guy's accident a few years ago... Can you tell me just what was the nature of his injury? His skull was fractured in two places. He was badly burnt, of course. Still, he was lucky to be in one piece. That ammunition truck blew sky high. Uh, what about the after effects? Periodic blackouts, headaches. That was to be expected. But they became less frequent. Oh, and there was some memory loss. But Major Lessing's a fit man. He made a complete recovery. Yes. He is all right, isn't he? I think so, yes. I'm not a doctor. Look, those headaches, blackouts, could they recur? It's not something I'd expect to happen, not after the first few months or so. Just what is it you're trying to get at, Richard? Well, was there any period during Guy's illness which could be closed to his memory? I'm sorry, Richard, I wouldn't care to say. Yeah, but there is a chance. All things are possible. And that's as definite as you can be. It's as definite as I dare be, if you really want me to be honest with you. Good evening, Mr. Lorne. Ian Jolly. I want to speak to him urgently. I'm afraid not, sir. Blast. 
Do you know where I can reach him? Mr. Rollison only went out for a short while. Perhaps you would care to come in and wait in the drawing room. I can't hang about all night. Well, well, Robertson, how's the father of the bride? I must speak to you right now. Uh, well, of course, uh, no other visitors, Jolly? No, sir. Oh, good. Well, just go through to the drawing room, Robert. I'll be with you in a second. Don't be too long. No, no, no. Any news of Mrs. Lessing, Johnny? No, sir, but I did leave a message at the hotel for her to telephone you. Oh, good. Uh, does Mr. Lorne know about his daughter's disappearance? I have no idea. Hmm. Well, keep an ear open for the phone, will you? Yes, sir. Well, Robert, I must say you don't look very happy. I have no reason to be. <laughs> What's the problem? I told Barbara till I was sick of telling her she was making the biggest mistake of her life marrying that Lessing. But she took no notice of me. Robert, I thought this was all in I've the never past. trusted Lessing. And my God, I was right. Now, oh, come on. Look, sit down and tell me. He's supposed to be a friend of yours, isn't he? Yes. Right. Well, did you know that he was already married? Guy? Were you serious? Yes, and I have the evidence to prove it. There, see for yourself. That marriage certificate says he married a woman calling herself Helen Goodman three years ago. Oh. Yeah? That's what it says here. Nice friends you have. Ah, I always said he was a fortune hunter. Now it turns out he's a bigamist as well. Oh, Robert, I can't believe it's true. But it's there in black and white. God, man, what more do you need? I don't know. Still, I can't understand how you feel. I doubt it. Anyway, that's bad enough. Now there's this other thing. Well, what other thing? You reckon to do a bit of detective work on the choir, don't you? Well, you could say so, yes. Would you be prepared to help me? Give me a bit of advice? Well, of course I would, Robert. You're a good friend. Right. Well, I'd like you to handle a personal matter for me, a highly confidential one. If I can, I will. And you won't let your friendship with Lessing bias you? Not if it concerns Barbara's happiness. Fair enough. An hour ago, I had a telephone call from a woman. She told me about this earlier marriage of Lessing's. A woman? Yes. Did you recognise the voice? No, I didn't. Oh, carry on. She said she was going to release this story to the newspapers unless I paid her £30,000 to keep quiet. That sounds very much like blackmail. That's the word for it. Which came first, the telephone call or the marriage certificate? The call. The certificate was dropped through my door shortly after. Mm. So there you are. Somebody is putting the bite on me, and I don't like it. Well, can you handle it? I could, but I don't think I should, Robert. You're more interested in looking after one of your buddies, eh? Oh, far from it. No, I always advise putting blackmail attempts into the hands of the police. What damn good would that be? You must realise, Robert, I never work against the police. I have far too much respect for them. I may occasionally fail to let them know everything that I'm doing, but that's something quite different. No, no, you contact the police. Look, for years I've worked at building up my good name. I've got a reputation to preserve. Yes, I'm sure you have. Nevertheless, that's my advice, and the police will give you all the help they can. But will they keep quiet about it? I can't be involved in any sort of public scandal. Look, if it makes you any happier, Robert, I'll have a word with Superintendent Grice of Scotland Yard. And I'll also make a few inquiries of my own. For me, not for the police. Well, let's say it's for Barbara. How are you supposed to pay the black men? They told me to make up ten packets of £3,000 and send each of them to a different address in London. Mm, it's probably been arranged like that to waste time. You've got instructions? Yes. I have until tomorrow afternoon to get the money and send it off. You have to admit that whoever is behind it is remarkably well organised. Yes, it looks as though they mean business. Should I pay up and keep them quiet until I've seen Barbara and told her what to say? I take it you know where she is. No, I don't. This thing made damn sure of that. Kept the honeymoon address for himself. So, do I pay up? Only if the police tell you to. But for what it's worth, I'd suggest that you pay one... Not £30,000. One hundred in each packet instead of three thousand. I can't see what good that'll do. Well, it'll keep them on a piece of string. They'll assume that because you've paid something, you'll probably pay the rest under pressure. But you'll have gained a little time for me to work in. Right. I'll go to Scotland Yard. How soon can you make a start? As soon as possible. Then I'll be on my way. And remember, Rollison, no scandal. At all costs, no scandal. Goodbye, Robert. Was that Mr. Lorne leaving? It was, Johnny. He appeared very agitated when he first arrived. Yeah, with good reason, Johnny. Mr. Lorne is being blackmailed. Indeed, sir. You know, this is a strange affair, and it's getting more complicated every minute. And the more regrettable when close friends are involved, sir. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I'm not quite sure who I should be protecting and who I should be investigating. 
It's certainly going to be an exercise in objectivity. Where do you propose to start, sir? Well, there's no point in being like the Duchess, who leapt on her horse and galloped off in all directions at once, so uh, I'll start at the beginning and see if I can find this Helen Goodman, the lady on the marriage certificate. Major Lessing's supposed wife, sir. Yes. Anyway, I'll drive down to the village of Bain. Yes, sir. Shall I accompany you? No, no, no. I want you here by the telephone. If you haven't heard from Mrs Lessing in, let's say, um, one hour's time, get on to Superintendent Grice at Scotland Yard. Give him her description and tell him that we have to find her as quickly as possible. Oh, and, um, and ask him not to leak it to the newspapers. I'll explain it to him later. Very good, sir. It's no more than a feeling, Jolly, but well, there's been phone calls, threats, insinuations. All talk so far. I have a feeling something's going to happen soon. I want to be sure it doesn't happen to Mrs Lessing. Oh, uh, uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I wonder if you'd mind. I I'm looking for Rufus Cottage. Ah. Hey, you see the pub a little way down the road? Uh, yes. That's the old Rufus. Now, Rufus Cottage is up the lane right behind it. <laughs> no wonder I didn't see it. <laughs> it's a very pretty village you've got. Oh, yes. Big enough so you don't feel like a hermit and small enough so you know everyone who lives here. Visiting, are you? Uh, yes. Hmm. Rufus Cottage. Uh, that'll be Major Carruthers. Oh, it's Major Lessing, actually. Lessing? Lessing. That's the other gentleman that stays there sometimes. Uh, weekends, mostly. Oh, really? Tall gentleman, fair hair, uh, not very talkative. Well, oh, no, that'll be him. You, you, know, you know him, then? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, not in a good morning. That's about all. Keeps himself to himself. I don't say. But I understood he was on fairly close terms with a young lady from these parts, so... Uh... What's her name? H H Helen? Helen? There's only one Helen lives here in the village. That's Helen Goodman. Ah, yes, that could be her. But close? Oh, I don't know. A very proper Helen is. She keeps an eye on Rufus Cottage. Keeps it tidy, you know. Oh, I understand. Yeah. She'd know him, yes, but... Oh, oh no, not close. Not, not with her being married. Oh, so she's married? For the past three years. Not that anyone's ever seen him. Somewhere up in London, it seems. Funny, him living there and her living here. <laughs> Most unusual arrangement. Ah, well, that's Helen. Unusual. Uh, would you happen to know her married name? Smith, she says. But I reckon that's her way of telling nosy barkers to mind their own business. <laughs> Could well be right. By the way, have you um, seen Major Lessing today? No. I've been here in the garden most of the day, but no, I can't say I have. Well, I'm sure he must be at the cottage by now. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's open. Oh, hello? Hello? Anyone at home? Hello, Guy? Are you there? Guy? Guy! This is how you found him when you come in. That's right, Charlie. The front door was half open, and naturally I just looked in. Well, this is a police job, I thought. So I called you. All right, this is what you did. What brought you over here? Well, after all, he is a stranger, and you never uh, know. I, I think he's coming, too. Uh, and he was asking a lot of questions. Uh, Didn't think much of the time. But, uh, well, you know, I only wish I had come across sooner. Oh, it's a nasty business. Mm. Do you reckon he knows about it? We'll find out soon enough. Oh, 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 oh my head. Now, you take it easy. Hmm? Oh, Constable. Give me a hand up, would you please? Here. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, oh. Steady. You'd better sit down. Yes, I think I'd better. Oh, hello. You're the gentleman I spoke to about Rufus Cottage. Yes. As you can see, I found it. Yes. Somebody had a strange way of making me welcome. I hope it's not a local custom. Well, that'll be them now. May I ask who? Superintendent Reno from Winchester. What? Superintendent for a knock on the head? Well, right, well. driver. They'll be waiting for you back in town. Bring them back here, quick as you like. You Constable Matthews? Yes, sir. Right, Constable. I'll take over from here. 
Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me, uh, is it all right if I go home? The wife will be worrying. Constable? Uh, this gentleman lives just along the line, sir. He found this lot and called me in. Right, sir, off you go. But stay at home. I'll want to speak to you later. I'll be there, Superintendent. Now, this is the one who was out cold when you arrived, Constable. Yes, sir. I'm sorry you've been troubled, Superintendent. It really isn't all that serious. Oh, no? Where's the... Uh, just uh... through here, sir. Behind the door. Yes. Well, it seems you're right, Constable. Any idea who it is? Oh, damn, I'll take it. Rufus Cottage, Bain. Superintendent Reno speaking. Yes, yes, I had a look. No, no doubt about it. Yes, yes, it's it's murder. Murder? I've sent the car back for the lads. OK. Now, sir, I'd like your name, please. Oh, certainly, sir. Then it is Rollis and Richard Rollis. But what's this about murder? I mean, may I ask just who is... I'm asking the questions at the moment, sir. Of course. Oh, you don't want my address, I suppose? No, I've got that. The constable took a look through your wallet when he found you. But you asked my name. Just wanted to see what you'd say. Well, I'd hardly say anything other than Rollison, surely. Oh, I don't know. If you had something to hide, you could have said Mr. Brown. And if you wanted to impress me, you could have said you were the toff. Well, you've been doing your homework, Superintendent. That's right. What are you doing here, Mr. Rollison? I came to visit a friend. And who's that? Major Guy Lessing. You expecting to find this Major Guy Lessing here? Yes, I was. Anybody else? Well, possibly his wife, Barbara. After all, they were married today. But about this murder... I'll come to that later. I'm more interested in knowing what happened to you. There's not really much I can say. I knocked at the door. When there was no reply, I stepped inside. That's when I was hit. That's all I know until... Well, until I came round a minute or two ago. You were attacked as you stepped through the door. Now, you're sure of that? Of course, yes. Is it so important? It might be, for you. Have you been in the next room? No. There's a dead woman in there. Right. Oh. God. She's been strangled. What? Do you, do you mind if I take a look? Help yourself. Uh, oh, Lord. Do you know her, Mr. Rollison? No, I've never seen her before. It's not that Barbara you mentioned. Oh, no, no. Constable. Yes, sir. The dead woman, what was her name? Helen Goodman, sir. She's a local. Thank you, Constable. You sure you don't know her, Mr. Rollison? Oh, positively not. And I do assure you, sir, pretend I had nothing to do with her death. Well, we'll see. Surely don't think I'm involved in this, do you? Mr. Rollison, I've heard all sorts of tales about you. What you get up to. Your relationships with the police in London. Now, some of those tales were good, and some were not. I imagine some were true, and some were... Well, maybe, but we do things differently down here. And for the moment, I'm looking on you as someone who can help me with my inquiries. No more, and no less. Well, I should like to get back to London as soon as possible. Well, we'll talk about that later. The police doctor should be here at any minute. He can patch up your head. After that, I suggest you make yourself comfortable down at the pub. Good evening, sir. What can I get for you? Oh, nothing just now, thanks. Where can I make a phone call? Just through the door at the end of the bar. There's a public call box. You can't miss it. Oh, thanks. Oh, hello, Jolly. It's me. Uh, have you any news of Mrs. Lessing? Uh, no, I'm afraid not, sir. Oh, pity. I did telephone Scotland Yard, as you requested, sir. Oh, good. I hope Superintendent Grice was cooperative. He's absent on leave, but I spoke to one of his colleagues, an Inspector Ellaby. El oh, yes, I know him, yes. And uh, he's putting out a search for Mrs. Lessing? Immediately, sir. He assured me of that. Yes, well, let's hope it's successful. Indeed, sir. By the way... Uh, where are you speaking from at the moment? Oh, I'm at the local hostelry at Bain, the old Rufus. Ah, that accounts for it. I telephoned Rufus Cottage two hours ago, but there was no reply. No, I'm not surprised. I had a slight accident about that time. Are you all right, sir? Yes, apart from a stitch or two in the head, but I'll tell you about that later. Right. Uh, will you be returning to London tonight, sir? Well, I want to, Jolly, but I'm afraid there's been a rather serious incident down here, and I think the local police would like me to stay on overnight. Do they suspect your involvement? I'm not quite sure, though I'm certainly being watched. Really, sir? Mm, they're not being too subtle about it, either. A young chap with his hat pulled down over his eyes. He has a lot to learn about how to remain inconspicuous. I trust all will be well, sir. No, I'm sure it will. Anyway, I'll get back to London as soon as I possibly can. Good night, Johnny. Good night, sir. Ah, 
Mr. Rollison. I was looking for you. Oh, and I was on my way to find you, Superintendent. Now, what a coincidence. Isn't it? Yes. Uh, Superintendent, I've been thinking about this unfortunate business at Rufus Cottage. Now, look, please correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't seriously believe I'm involved with this murder. I mean, I'm not a suspect, am I? I never said so. Exactly. So, in that case, I'm sure you can't have any objection to my going back to London tonight. After all, you know who I am. You've got my address. I'm sorry, Mr. Rollison. But why? Well, I wouldn't like to think of you behind the wheel of a car tonight. You wouldn't? No, no, not in your condition. Oh, well, if that's all... With that bang on the head, you need a good night to rest. I've I booked your room here at the old Rufus. Superintendent. It's a nice room with a bathroom attached. Here's the key. You're too kind. Yes, I think so. Oh, and you won't be needing your car, so I've parked it in the courtyard round the back. It'll be safe enough there. I'm sure it will. You won't need your keys to the morning, so I'll take care of them. You've thought of everything, haven't you? That's right, Mr. Ollison. You know, it's probably my imagination, but I have the strangest feeling as I'm being watched. As you say, it's probably your imagination. You'll be all right after a good night's sleep. Uh, good night, Mr. Rollison. Good night, Superintendent. <laughs> Oh, come in. Uh, just a moment. Richard. Good Lord, Barbara. I've been waiting all evening for a chance to see you. What on earth are you doing here? And in those clothes? I, I didn't want to be recognised. Well, you certainly deceived me. I noticed this young chap lurking about. I thought I was being watched by the police. I'm sorry, Richard. Oh, that's all right, Barbara. What the devil have you been doing these last few hours? When you phoned from the Majestic, I told you to sit tight and wait for Jolly. I, I know. Well, why didn't you? Oh, I don't know. I, I was so miserable. You've no idea, Richard. It's what you said on the phone. I'd made up my mind. Guy was guilty. I wasn't even giving him a chance to explain. So I decided to come down to Rufus Cottage. And, well, I just had to see Guy. Yeah. I was desperate. Well, can't you understand? I might, if I believed it. Richard, you don't think I'm lying, do you? I wonder if you're telling me the whole truth. I mean, why this disguise, these clothes? Uh, Damn! Did anybody see you come in here? I don't think so. Well, go into the bathroom. Oh, and, and shut the door. Who is it? Superintendent Reno. Well, Superintendent, I was just about to go to bed. This won't take long, Mr. Rollison. Now, you went to Rufus Cottage today to meet Major Guy Lessing? Yes, I've already told you. And he was married today? That's right, to Barbara Lorne. Who you also expected to meet at the cottage? It was a possibility. They're both friends of yours? Yes. Mr. Rollison, we've had a very busy time searching through that cottage. I can imagine, Superintendent. But it's been worth it. We've found a marriage certificate. Really? Yes, it seems that Helen Goodman, the murdered woman, was married three years ago to your friend, Major Guy Lessing. Good. Lord. There's no doubt about it. I've checked through the public records well, office. Sure, but why come and tell me about it? You said you expected your two friends to be at Rufus Cottage. Now, I don't know if you met them. But you see, at this moment, I can't think of two people with a better reason to want Helen Goodman dead. <laughs> That was part two of The Toff and the Runaway Bride, a serial for radio dramatized by Roy Lomax, based on the novel by John Creasy, starring Terence Alexander as The Toff with Robert Dorning as Jolly. Major Guy Lessing was played by Alan Cuthbertson, Barbara Lessing by Rosalind Shanks, Dr. Willard and the Villager by Dennis McCarthy, Robert Lorne by Kevin Brennan, and Superintendent Reno by Godfrey James. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The producer was John Fawcett Wilson.